This is Mike Goldberg, the voice of Bellator MMA. Great to be podside once again. Set to enter the podcast right now. Our tale of the tape, the current undefeated champion of the world, Captain Hooter, defending his title once again. And I can tell you, no champion has ever defended his podcast this many times. Well, since podcast began. Can he do it again? Let's find out. Here we go! It's Captain Hooter! (laughs) Hey, what's happening, everybody? Hooter here, coming to you high and alive, and I have a spectacular show for you today. I have something really special. First of all, you need to know about this company. And by now, you should know about it because I've been talking about it. I've been working for them for six months. Check out Relevant. There's a big difference between being somewhere and being a local. Locals know it all. The biggest issues. The most exciting topics. The latest buzz. The coolest things to do. Because all those locals... They're getting the inside scoop. The question is, how do you tap into that knowledge? How do you connect with all those people who are talking about your favorite things? How do you become a local? With Relevant. It's the app that connects you with the freshest voices around you. The ones who are podcasting. That's me. Writing. That's me. And moving the needle on things you care about. That's me. All you do is pick what you're passionate about, whether it's entertainment, news, or smoking the bud. sports, culture, and Relevant shows you the best, most relevant local voices, sources you'd never find with a Google search. Each That's time it. new content arrives, you get updated in real time, so you can keep your finger on the pulse of what matters to you. And even when you travel, Relevant goes along with you. So you'll always be in the know, just like a local. Connect with your passions and the people who share them, wherever you live, wherever you go. Get relevant today. Right now, I want to introduce you. And right now, you're going to learn a lot more about relevant. Check this out, and I'll be back right after. One. Hola, hola, everyone. Hooter here, once again, very high and very alive, but not quite as high as I normally am because I've got a really special interview I'm doing here today. Um, It's not very often that you get this opportunity, but I'm actually interviewing the boss today. I have the visionary, the founder of Relevant Inc., Winder Hughes. Winder, how are you, sir? Good, good, sir. Good to see you. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Kashkai, Portugal. Uh, the, it's finally, the temperatures have come down a little bit, but it's absolutely oh, wow. stunning here right now. Oh, wow. Have you, been, have you been to Portugal yet? No, nope. And I've, I've never been to Spain, like the song says, but no, and, I, and I've never been, been to Portugal either. But France, Italy, but uh, I hear it's awesome over there. Oh. It's, it's a really special spot, and uh, I've, I'm reluctant to leave, but I'm excited to leave because I'm going back to Amsterdam, and we're going to really be able to kick off my vibe into another direction here. So before we get going too, too strong here, everybody knows what Relevant is, obviously, because I've been here, coming to my vibes, coming to my shows. Can we talk about the spark? What was it that gave you the first spark about this is a, this is relevant. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> well, it's a long story because the app has been through a lot of iterations, a lot of pivots, a lot of recent uh, creative uh, 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 innovations. But at the heart of it, it was built around your interest. And for me, the spark was I was playing guitar, and I was always taking lessons. I'm like, well, you know, how can I always have to like take lessons just to play guitar, right? So like, how would I find people locally around me that I could reach out to a community of people that like that play guitar who I could play with? Like, 
I, 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 it was like a little kid. Like I was trying to find some friends, you know, like, like where's the sandbox? And so you would think that existed, right? But it really doesn't. And so there wasn't any like, oh, you know, J Jacksonville guitar players. So that was the spark that kind of got it going. And although now it's group messaging with all these other things to it, but it's still built around connecting with people around the interests that, that you have. So that's, that's, that's what got it going. And unfortunately now that I've been working on relevant, I've lost all the calluses on, on my fingers from playing the guitar. So I need to get that back going again. Dude, you should be with me with the Oculus Rift. I don't know if you saw my last show. I opened it up. I'm playing Unplugged. It's one of the oh, coolest wow. things ever. I'm playing, I'm playing oh, wow. Pantera songs uh, with oh, my wow. hands in the air. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. These, these kids today, this technology. You know, it's it's funny because you 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 talked about the, your that drive and you know I go back to the early days of Twitter, like when Twitter first came out, and you know it was Twitter and it was Foursquare. Do you remember Foursquare? Yep. Where yep. you would check into places and then yeah. And, and and to me, like that was some of the earliest forms, and 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 virtually there was a, a group called Second Life. Do you remember Second oh, Life? Okay. No. Okay, Second Life was brilliant. I know it was brilliant because I created a convention center in there and ran a business in there. When the Trade Center blast happened in New York City, you know, people didn't want to plan meetings or events. And uh, I created a virtual convention center that held 500 people. And this was, you know, a long time ago. And, sure. Uh, and that was like, for me, some of the first real community building. And the first time I ever saw anything being kind of displayed out as a show or something in a virtual environment. Now you have made it so simple with relevant. And I mean, how many vibes are there right now on the, on the app? Uh, I mean, right now, so th there's, there's thousands of them, right. But, but I would say, because we're still small, truly active ones, right. That people are chatting and, you know, each and every day, my get my best guess is around, you know, 200 or so that are, fairly active and, you know, it, it, it's mostly around sports, cannabis, movies and TV shows and music. Like those are kind of the four areas where like the passion points are high, where there's fandom. And so like, yeah, that's, that's what's going on now. But we need like to take that from 200, like, like to 20,000. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things is that, you know, it is truly an, an, it's like, uh, I, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, it's, it's like, if you, whatever you wanted to do, and that's what everybody's talking about right now, you know, with this, what do they call it? The, the quitting culture and everybody's going, oh, if cancel I only, culture. Yeah. yeah. Cancel culture. Right. So if I only had enough money or, or, or willpower to go out and go do this. And I'm telling them, dude, you could do it right now. You download this app. You're, you're on go. Yep. Do it yep. right now, whatever yep. it is. And yep. And and you know, um, we we are we will be introducing in the next month or so here monetization for chat room hosts. So you'll be able to earn revenue from donations, subscriptions, and pinned media that's in your chat room. So this will become something because we re I mean now we recognize that we moved also into a creator economy as well, right? Whereas, you know, so when social media first kind of started, you know, five or six years ago, it was really about just ha hanging out. It's beyond that now. It's a business, right? I mean, it's, it's fun, but it's also a business. So, so we're coming out with new tools for creators that we think is going to kind of drive a bigger virtuous cycle um, in front of us here. You know, it is, it's one of the things because I, I read a quote from you, I think it was earlier this year, and you talked about being, you're still early in this market. And it's weird because you are early. You're still early in this market, but you're also a little bit late in some ways, right? Yes. Um, yes. I I, I've had, you know, I've got, I've got 8,000 something followers on my YouTube channel that I've been working on for now three years, four years. And uh, I've, I've been, you know, saying, come on in and come into my, into my room. And I, one of the strange responses that I didn't expect to get from people, including, you know, loyal fans for a long time, is like, another community? 
It was like another because mm -hmm. they're already on. There's the people have already committed times and efforts in there. Yes, so it's time now. To me, I took that as I'm taking it as an inspiration, and like I've already got a whole game plan for my next six months of what I'm going to be doing in Amsterdam, where I'm going. To, I have to can now compete on a, a much stronger level in order to get those eyes on me. And I realize yes. how hard that is to do. Yes. Yeah, especially live. See, that's the, the live is a whole nother ball game. I've been doing videos for years and, and I can get yeah. videos whenever they feel like coming in. Uh, it, it's different. You have to be good and have something to show and share to people. Yeah, um, and, and, and users need to now also be rewarded for their time. Yeah. I mean, time is literally money, right? So you'll see in this new set of monetization, there'll be a rewards system for users as well as the creators. So we have a really like, like a powerful cycle because you're right. Like people, it like, it's time economics. Like that's where we're at now. Did, did you know in the beginning that cannabis was going to be one of the larger or one of the more active? No, I know. I mean, it, it, it wasn't until we were, you know, kind of being led down the path that, well, look, I mean, you know, here's the, here's a content vertical that's being heavily censored out there. And we're like, okay, well, you know, we're, we're new. So we'll, we'll take people that are being censored. You know? So, uh, and, and, uh, uh it, it's kind of weird why it's censored because it's a business where there's products being sold right so like why should the media aspect of it be censored if 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 the economy for it is it's not like an underground economy you know it, it's a legal economy so it doesn't make so anyway is what it is but we'll take advantage of it so you've created a ton of vibes also. Uh, you have a very diverse uh, interest list, I have to tell you. Because I well, I mean <laughs> I I I I overfollowed like a lot of stuff too, right? You know, <laughs> but uh, I, I mean my stuff is fairly limited. Like I like following like the cannabis stuff, but I'm a sports fan and I like following the markets. You know, and I'm a tennis player, so I like that. I don't play golf, but I'm a golf fan. Yeah, and okay. so I like so 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 like following golf. Um, and I love music, and I've made several segments that I want to start doing now on the platform myself. So on so like for music, I have the logo. It's all done. It's called Stylus. Oh, and that's going to be my segment. And I, and I, and I want to get people on to talk about certain albums. Like that's what I want stylus to be about. So just one, it's, album. Uh, just one album at a time. Yeah. Specific yeah. Album. One album, talk about the album, like the album art, the songs, you know, find somebody that's a fan of whoever the album is, you know, from, and talk about the album. And while we're talking, share links from Spotify in on our songs that we could do all that, that kind of stuff. It really, you know, in a lot of ways, you're really replacing radio um, in, in, you know, cause that was the first thing I thought about. I was just thinking about KLOS when I was a kid, Jim Ladd. Jim Ladd used to do a Sunday thing where we would, he would pick one album and talk. Through, really? Yeah, and talk yeah. through every single, I, I forgot what it was called, but he would talk through every single song on the album. And it was all uh, uh, in like HD sound, which in those days was really uh, phenomenal. Um, but you know, you couldn't interact with Jim Ladd while no. that was going on. You couldn't ask questions no. or or, right. even, or no. participate and say, "Oh, dude, I have Dark Side of the Moon signed by uh, Roger Waters." And it's like, yes. what? You know, and that's yes. part of what makes it so fun is the interaction. Yes. Yes. Dude. Did you know right away? I mean, when did you, the, what year was, I know 2017, I think is when you actually launched, launched it, but did relevant. You, yeah. I mean, so we had some things going on a little bit before that, but um, it was when we just, when we re rebranded and kind of just went all in with the name relevant and in our direction, but really it's, it's, it's really been over the last 18 months that we really have kind of found ourselves, you know, 
group messaging, live podcasting, like that's what it is. And we're all like, like that's our direction. And now we're just making the platform like just more user friendly. And now, now it's time here to, you know, hit the pedal, like the metal, as yeah. they say. I was surprised because I heard you were, uh, you're, you're a bit of a, a wine connoisseur, a little bit of a fine dining. Oh vibe. yeah. No, I mean, uh, how come we don't have well, a, a, a fine dining vibe? Why? <laughs> I need to look. I mean, I, I, I've, I got to start running around wine. I mean, right, and just and, and like have the wine hour, and then I get a bottle of wine and I pop it open and I talk about it. And I talk about, I talk about kind of other stuff, but but drink the whole bottle dur during ah. the session, right? You got to like put the whole bottle down while you're live. No, I was gonna say I no. saw a thing today. There was a big report. It showed a, a new uh, research study, and it showed like fifteen different people after drinking one glass, two glass, and three glasses of wine, and they did a photo uh, parallel. I'll put it on this so people can see it. It's hilarious. <laughs> so you see people picture one, picture two, yep, picture three, <laughs> picture four, <laughs> right? Absolutely. That's that's a hundred percent. That is the flow to the nines because because the first glass you are still in a bad mood man and you are trying to get into a good mood so a little stoic on the first one um but yeah i, I and look, look i'll be honest i i mean i drink wine every day and, and i mix it up you know between red and red and whites um um more on on the white side it's really only chardonnay mm. Is kind of what I like there. You have and a yeah, it's Rombauer. Rombauer, dude. I mean, it's you know your stuff. That well done. Oh, uh, but Rombauer is the bomb, man. I mean, now you know. Then you've got like everybody. Gergic, else. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Gergich Hills is good. Uh, is it Paulson Hall? Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a good one. I mean, these are expensive ones, right? Like these are really. Um, but I'll, but I'll tell you one that's actually inexpensive. That's really, really good is bread and butter. I think I heard about them. And where, where are I they mean, out of? Is that out of Napa? And probably California, but I mean, like it's sold in every, every grocery store. It's like th 13, like the 14 bucks a bottle. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's, it's really, it's, it's I, like, I try like to mix it up. I'm like, nope. Back to bread and butter again. Because it, it it delivers, but if I'm in a great mood, Rombauer. Rombauer, baby. I you know I think Rombauer is the best Chardonnay, and I, you have to go to a a, a Monoche if you're going to do anything any on a white that's any better than that. I'm I'm a huge wine lover, and my my son-in-law uh, is a wine expert. He's a wine sommelier, owned his own wine company for a while. Used to work, really used to work at Palais Kolber in Vienna, Austria. Um, that was where my daughter met him, uh, where we all met him, actually. Uh, if you're not familiar with Palais Kohlberg uh, in Vienna, you need to put that on your list. I'm not. So you're going to have oh, to, like, God. send me a link or something. Okay. So I'm going to tell you, for, yeah. a wine, for a wine person, this is the holy grail. Because this, oh, really? this is a place that is a, a, a pri mostly a private collection, but it's one of the top 10 most high-end uh, collections in all of Europe and one of the only ones where you can actually buy some of these and drink some of these wines. Let me wow. just start you, I'm going to start you off with the one that'll blow your mind. When you first go into the place, they have a Chateau Yakem cave and it has a hundred years of Chateau Yakems all on the wall. 100 years of them. I think they've only missed one, including the big, um, I, what's it called? Uh, there's Magnum Double. Uh, uh, Methuselah Magnums. Do you know those? It's like six liters. Oh right? yeah, yeah they that's... got those of Chateau you kept. You sit there and you go, "Oh my God!" <laughs> 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 they have they have a the the largest collection of some of. I mean, Chateau. I think there's a what year is it? Uh, eighteen an eighteen sixty five Chateau Lafitte Rothschild. That oh they yeah, have, they have in this. You have to look in it through a, a cave in the back, and the the label looks like it was almost hand drawn with ink. For it, it was that that old and and amazing. Oh, it is absolutely one of the spots. Now, have you been to Amsterdam yet? 
No, but it, it, it like needs to be on my list, right? It does now. Absolutely. It, it, it needs to be on the bucket list over the next year, right? Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm going to be back there and uh, I, I, I will tell you right away when you come, I will take you to dinner to the, the, the best restaurant in all of the Netherlands. And it's a place that you will love. It's called, and my Dutch is terrible, De Le Brea is the way you pronounce it. The, the chef's gotcha. name is Johnny Bauer. And it's a Michelin star chef. It's a boutique hotel that used to be a woman's prison. And oh, wow. That's fascinating. Rooms, each one of the rooms are cells. And you open them up and then you go down and it's a, it's, it's a magnet. Oh, wow. One of the best uh, multi-course meals, a bouchon or a, a Jean Roubichon, so, you know. So does it have the vibe of that place that's in New York and maybe you've heard of it called Cafe de Artis? Yeah, No, I've heard have about you- it. Similar, but this is very, very much more high end. Uh, I mean, this is this is Michelin High Star, and you watch all. It's it's right up there. Yeah, um, you, you're gotcha. right down your alley. You'll love it. They even roll you a little joint for your bed. Uh, that, oh wow, that, that that's edible. <laughs> oh wow, boy, what a special yeah. place. Oh, absolutely. Well, I I was hoping that you know I know you you said you've been to France. Have you you've done Paris and. Paris, and then, uh, yep, I uh, was there about 10 years ago with my ex-wife. We, we went on a back roads trip there, which is um, biking, oh. cycling. Not, oh, not, okay. not, not, not like motorcycle, but like the bicycles. Oh, wow. Lots of those like, roads. Yeah. And so it was in like the Lower Valley. Okay. Yep. And, and, and uh, we would bike about 90 miles a day and they would move all of our bags and you'd stay in these really cool uh, converted uh, castles and whatnot that were these, these inns. And it was like, and you know, it's all the back roads of France, which obviously, which are spectacular. And, and I, I remember just all of the, the amazing sunflower mm-hmm. fields there. I mean, yep. boy, that's just like over the top. Just like, wow, look at that. Paris. I love Paris. Yeah, love and, and, and like love Paris. I mean, and the thing with Paris is it's amazingly small geographically. So, you, so it's actually easy to walk around the whole damn city. Well, and it's it's also important. It's like it's a city of connections um, because in order to do a lot of the coolest things to do there, you need to know somebody or. Oh God, yes, I can imagine. Yes, there's a yeah. When every time I go there, there's a, a smaller restaurant it's called La Cordonnière, and uh, Chef Hugo, who I've now known for ten years, he has two uh, chefs' tables that face the the kitchen, and then all the other seats are in the rest of the restaurant, and uh, you want to sit in one of those chefs' tables right there facing him, watching him, and every single day it's a it's a new adventure, and he's so sure. Angry. So great. Um, La Cinq at uh, uh, the Four Seasons. If you haven't had a chance to, to dine there is one of the greatest place. And um, the place for the chicken, uh, La, La, uh, La Mi Louis is one of the places you absolutely, if you never get a chance to do anything else there, it's the single greatest chicken, just roasted chicken that I wow. recommend it to everybody you ever have in your life. It's a, a Bresse chicken, and they have one of the only fire roasting ovens still in Paris. Mm. And they cook it. Sounds at, delightful. Oh, absolutely insane. Yeah. But, you know, ah. just like just like cannabis, I I I hunted and and you know tried to find the best of the best of of, of all of these things in the, my previous career. Uh, you talked a lot about sports and. Um, are you a boxing fan? Obviously, you brought Mike Tyson in. I mean, yeah, we got Mike involved here. I mean, I I like watching it when it's on. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, it's it's just one of those things that it's just kind of, I mean, it's so different than the other kind of competitive team or one to one sports: golf, tennis, auto racing, football. I mean, I mean, like. I mean, Bach, it's like, like it's, it's old school. I mean, it's, it's combat. Yeah. You know I mean? So it's and the that, first form of, I mean, fighting is what back in the arenas, you know, I mean, it's back, 
to the gladiator stuff. I mean, that's what it is, man. It's interesting because it, as far as, as combat sports, in, in my opinion, I think it's, it's kind of, it's losing ground. It has lost ground over the last 10 years to the UFC. And even on the relevant app, as I was noticing, the UFC app or the UFC vibes seem to have a lot more action going on. You yeah. Know? Especially, yeah. Yeah. And there's just more events going on, right? Yeah. And I would say now, like, like there really hasn't been a, a recent boxer that's had the personality of like a Muhammad Ali or a, you know, Mike Tyson, right? Like, I mean, like maybe the last guy that had real, I don't know, like who do you think was the last one? Is it Sugar Ray or like, I mean, who had the real pizzazz? Because um, right now, like the boxers are just good, but you don't really feel like their personality. Yeah. There was the, the last guy that really kind of crossed over, but he, everybody thought he was arrogant, was uh, Prince Hasim Hamed. And, uh, you know, he was a, a fireball for a long time. And he reminds me a lot of Conor McGregor now. You know, Conor oh, yeah. that's, it has that same. Uh, now that's a personality. Now look, that's why, you have, that's, why, that's why I like the UFC is so popular. You get guys like that out there. I mean, you know, he's a lightning rod. Absolutely. So what do you think is next? Uh, I, I was told not too long ago that you're just starting to get the, the YouTube channel going, um, which is exciting to me because then, uh, you know, as soon as you've got that really rolling, I can start moving my content directly over there and then funneling it out of relevant first, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, well, right, right, right now we're, um, we, we've, we've got it down now where if, if you're live on relevant doing a podcast that we, that will turn it into like a social clip that you can then share out to your social following. And so our goal there is, is to start to collect the daily activity of all these, whether it's in sports or cannabis or boxing and, and just turn it into a factory where the stuff is just out there, right? So the folks are like, wow, like I see this relevant stuff everywhere, right? Whether it's in politics or boxing or cannabis, like we want to have it where it, it's just out there. And, and then, then all of a sudden, like, I'll be honest, right? Like we, we still, I mean, outside of Mike being involved, like we really haven't had that second, third, fourth, fifth major celebrity yet to kind of hear about it to come on and do something, right? Mm -hmm. we, we just have not had that yet. So I think that we're close to that happening. Uh, mm -hmm. But meanwhile, it's been okay because we've been working out some of the malfunctions on the app and refining our, um, our features. And I think, you know, um, where we have the monetization stuff uh, next month, then I think it's going to be kind of, you know, open sesame. Yeah. Because there... What we're going to have is that all users, whether you're a creator or a user, you'll start to gain a score based on the activity that you're doing so that you form a persona and that will have this leaderboard of chat rooms and users wow. based on activity and behavior that you're doing, whether you send chat messages or you invite friends or you start a new you know, chat topic or your live or like all these, all these characteristics will have a weighting out and we'll start to form scores around that. So that's, that's where I think this thing really starts to kind of, it's going to intersect the, the need for us to have something that matches time economics for both users uh, uh, and creators. It's brilliant. You know, and again, it's, you know, I, I was telling somebody the other day, there's 1.75 million podcasts. I think that's the number now that are, that are out there on active. It's getting harder and harder. Buried. No, they're, they're, they're like buried out there. Yeah. And so, no, they're, they're just lost. I mean, they're lost on Spotify. They're lost on, on, you know, uh, uh, iTunes. So what we want to do with Relevant is drive the next generation of live podcasters, right? Like, so, so when folks go, well, I'm on Relevant, we want folks to be making the type of content on Relevant that we're known for, right? Just like 
YouTube, okay, there's where I make recorded videos, right? Like an Instagram is where I sh share pictures and, and TikTok's where I make short form videos and relevance where I do live interactive podcasting with my community. Like that's what that is. And so, yes, we're bringing over folks that do these other things on the other networks, right? But we want it to be where all new people are coming in and tomorrow's folks that are that, that, that become well well known got well known for doing their thing on relevant like that's where this has to go sure absolutely well i gotta tell you i'm very excited to get back into amsterdam i have a plethora of 169 different coffee shops spread out all around oh wow amsterdam. i have a, another a ton of them up in den Haag and in uh, the beautiful city of uh of uh you've got to be lot so like so so can you move around and do like yeah. your live shows? That's, that's exactly from those what places. I'm do that's We're so here. exciting. No, that I've, would be like so exciting. Well, and and again, I already wrote the connoisseur's guide to the Amsterdam coffee shop, so there's some of those I'll be able to avoid, but all of the good ones, and you'll be able to see me there firsthand and be able to see what the menu. Oh wow! Is like and see what you know uh, the interactions look like and what's close. So by. when is that? As soon as I get when are you back. Going so, back? So, so uh, on September 2nd, I will be back in Amsterdam. And uh, as I've, I've announced on some of my previous shows, on the starting on the 4th, the 4th through the 10th, I'm going to be coming to everyone live from inside the judge's house, inside the Jack Harrow Cup this year. Uh, this is my third year being one of the judges, and you'll get to see me uh, interpreting all of the buds, taking photographs, interacting with <laughs> all of the other judges. It's the first all right. that, that I've great. ever seen. Anybody, uh, though, you'll get to see behind the scenes inside the judges, uh, the house. And then yeah. on the 10th is the actual cup and the awards. You'll be there uh, seeing that live on my stream. And then on the next day, we have the the third annual squash off which is the the resin rosin challenge which is you know where they squish the buds which is legal in amsterdam we're doing a a, 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 a squash off there and i'm one of the judges for that as well so oh, wow a squash gonna, off okay yes, yes. and that's Can't what <laughs> that is with uncle stoner and it's going to you'll have legend <laughs> there it's a, it's a it's an amazing event and so that's going to happen then and then as soon as that event is over the next week is when we're going to start uh, the spontaneous smoke sessions uh, in all the best coffee shops in Amsterdam. Oh my gosh, I cannot yeah. wait. All right, so make sure that you schedule these and I'm going to add them all to my calendar, man. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm going to be talking about you in every place. Uh, again, this is my first time ever that I've ever been in a, a scenario where I can interview my boss he knows that I smoke weed. I can smoke right in front of him if I want to. Let me ask you now: Do do you smoke? Have you smoked before, or what is your cannabis? Yeah, experience? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I've I've never been, you know, uh, one that overdid it. But I was, uh, you know, a, a I, I'd say a frequent user in you know high school, college. And then, you know, it started to slow down. I got married, you know, kind of wasn't doing it, doing it as much. Um, now you went uh, to North Carolina, right? UNC? Yeah. So you yeah. were uh, 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 right after I'm Dean? I'm a Tar Heel. Yeah, right what? after right after Dean Smith? I was there when Dean was there. His, his son was in my fraternity. Oh. So yeah. Oh, yes. I've, I've heard some incredible. And, stories about that and guy. he liked to smoke did he? <laughs> he'd son like this oh yeah his son did oh listen one time we smoked with phil ford who was a ma who was a major oh. major player i was a freshman and we i was with scotty and we ended up in phil's uh dorm room and and, and you know like and just smoke and enjoy it with phil like damn you know? so probably maybe the most famous person i've ever smoked with but anyway how cool is that but 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 more recently, um, I had one of those things. It was like a cigarette. Um, you probably know what it was, but it it, it it had a filter. But but then like the buds were like the cigarette, and it just kind of burnt on down. Like what are those called? A blunt. Could be a blunt. So maybe there's so, there's so many products that are like that. Now. Okay, so it's a blunt. 
Yeah. Uh, boy, that's that. I mean, after one of those, the whole thing. I mean, I was like, I was way too out there. Yeah. A pre-roll could have been a, just a, a pre-roll, which is a. Uh, have you tried any of the vape pens? Uh, those those are those those are the little things that you just kind of that that you just uh, that you just kind of yeah 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 so those those could be those are great <laughs> but I think those could be like way too have it for me I mean that that would be because e they're so easy to use I mean good grief you wake up boom I mean yeah. you're gonna do it all day right so um because I kind of I mean I had, Sorry. A that had one of those those no I said wow man like this is great but damn that's gonna to be too easy to, that's just too easy um well you're gonna love the gummies oh yeah. go ahead i like the i i i like the gummies um but um yeah the, those i like but it doesn't feel like the same kind of real high it's just the actual plant like it like when when you smoke i mean so so i would still say that smoking is still the most authentic like that's the real feeling mm -hmm. the gummy I, I guess it has the same ingredients right but it just doesn't kind of feel like you're stoned i mean you are but not as stoned like after smoking the real grass yeah. well if you get a chance and you want to backtrack through some of my other episodes we've covered a, a plethora of different kind of delivery systems that are available out there now they have a, a so a, many ones that look like uh, asthma inhalers 10 milligrams at a pump. oh my gosh 10, 10, really 30 40 yep you've got so uh, so so th those are like the new bomb right well no there's kind of I mean, there's so many new things uh, th like right now there's something a thco and THCP, right? This is okay. like the newest stuff right now. And THCO is 30 times stronger than THC, and THCP wow. is 300 times stronger. Good and, grief. And there's, P I, I've had one uh, person I interviewed who said he's got a, a, a vape pen with the THCP, and he was a daily smoker, smoked all day long. And uh, he, he takes one big hit of it in the morning when he wakes up with his coffee, and another one when he goes to bed at night. And he's not. Wow. Smoking. It just keeps him on a nice level buzz the entire day long. There's in in Netherlands right now they've got an aqua water that was created um, from a, a group called Suvernuver, and this is a nanotechnology water where they encapsulate the THC uh, or not THC. I think it's uh, the active ingredients, the cannabinoids, inside the water molecule, so it passes through and goes right into your bloodstream directly. And the, wow. I'm hearing that it tastes like shit, but it works. And people are saying <laughs> you, they, you take, they take a cap full at night and it's good night and will and hard to wake them up in the morning the next day. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I'll see that in about two weeks myself personally. So I'll, I, I'll be able to let you know about that one. <laughs> good one. So do you think, do you think uh, Mr. Ford, that was your, your biggest celebrity uh, uh, cannabis contact uh, I so think far so i mean like i'm trying to remember I'm, I'm i'm sure there's somebody else that is that is bigger but uh that's that's what i remember like have the you, most have you done a dab yet no i haven't actually okay. um another one on the but, checklist but, yeah that that needs to happen um yeah yep. we've so, got a we've so what's got a the eta eta for mm -hmm. What's the ETA on on the buzz after the dab? Is it instant? Instant, and uh, much more profound. Um, oh wow! Yeah, I the one of the first one that I had done correctly, and it's it's a procedure to do it correctly. Strangely enough, but uh, now they have some new devices that make it a lot easier. But when I first had my first one, which was I think about four years ago now. It was quite a setup. You had to use a blowtorch, so it looked like you were freebasing something. Okay. Uh, it, it, which was a turnoff to me. And it had to get to a certain temperature, then it had to cool to a certain temperature, and then uh -huh. you put the product in there. Took a quick hit. You don't hold it. If you hold it, it's the worst thing ever. And of course, the first one I took, I held it, and I don't remember anything for about 40 minutes. <laughs> I was just... Long, so, long, so, long, long. Yeah. so was it kind of the next level from the ways that we used to smoke hash where you put it on this little pen and yeah. light it up and you put like a glass over it and you'd, 
you light it up and let the let all the smoke get filled up and yeah you know, that's it, very american of you and uh which i learned when i got here you know in europe hash is the thing you know hash is way more prevalent here than than cannabis is but they smoke the hash with tobacco so that's ah. that's the whole thing they grind up the the hash in a little bit and they mix it with tobacco and that's the the preferred way i told them i felt so ignorant because i'd only ever smoked it under a glass you know <laughs> you know <laughs> california so we had it under right. glass, had to go take the hit on the side to to, to yeah the hat old but, school old school so the concentrates though could end up evolving into being the preferred method of of uh, of quote unquote medicating right with cannabis gotcha if you think about giving if you were going to give your grandma a hit to go to sleep at night actually the the version that would be the safest most measured dose i mean you can measure this right down to a very specific dose would be a dab and it wow. would have the immediate effect on it. Good night, grandma, or uh, get up, grandma, in the morning. Get her a dab of ten milligrams of, of some power uh, uh, narrow leaf sativa. Let's go. Um, <laughs> you know, it's 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 very interesting how all of this is evolving, and it's in between the medicine and the psychedelic mushrooms. Now, yeah, that's that's again the next big kind of thing that's happening right now. Have you, uh, do you, did you ever get a chance to do any mushrooms or any psychedelics? I, I, I uh, not the, um, the plant stuff, although a ton of people did because we're in Florida and yeah. um, all these guys back in the day, you know, high school and whatnot, they'd go down to Gainesville where there's like lots of cow farms and then they'd go out yeah. there. And, but there was, there's always all the stories of, you know, tasting so bad and, people getting sick. I'm like, man, that just doesn't sound like very much fun to me. But I did try the chocolates oh. a, um, a few months ago. Oh, and um, I mean, it, it was quite a lift. You know, yeah. it was quite uh, a lift. Microdose, though, right? Would you do like, yeah, two, I, I like square two of the chocolate tabs, mm -hmm. just, just like a Hershey bar. Well, one of the guests that I'm going to have coming on in the next couple of weeks is a, a lady called the the Mushroom Mama. Uh, her name is oh, wow. Brittany Russell, and she's absolutely fabulous. And she's been working uh, to destigmatize uh, mushrooms and psychedelics, but oh, mushrooms in wow, general. that's that's the quite a challenge. Is micro dosing right? And micro uh -huh. we're talking about micro 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 dosing. So you're talking about zero point zero zero five percent, and there's tons of people now in the United States who are get up in the morning, just like they take their, their vitamin, uh, multivitamin, they take a little capsule with a little, uh, zero, zero, zero point five microdose. Of wow. And yeah, stories have been phenomenal. Um, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if you saw Mike Tyson himself, uh, just did a, a story a couple of days ago saying it is the key to his happiness in his life right now is he's microdosing yeah. mushrooms every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I, know. I think we're all very lucky because you don't want an angry Mike Tyson coming at you. No, definitely not. Everyone's working for this plant and everyone's got a great, you know, smile on their face. And I'm again, I'm so uh, grateful to you for really carving out a special space for all of us uh, within this app with intention and, and thank you. I mean, it's, it's, uh, yes, indeed. Yeah. I think you're going to have a lot more people. I know that I've been talking with my friend, uncle stoner, who is one of the preeminent concentrate experts in the world. And, uh, I think he wants to come on and, and start a vibe here, uh, uh, pretty soon, maybe right at, after he does this, uh, squash off here in Amsterdam. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, we talked about what's next. I mean, the, the YouTube channel, monetization for the for everyone um uh, the fact that you're doing these clips uh, if anyone has seen my clips recently you have seen the ones that relevant did you've got some real skill uh behind the scenes oh no they're they're awesome so i mean like you know like longer term like i feel and you may not even be, be aware of this feature but like i feel that the, the real differentiating feature that that we have on the platform is the ability 
to create location-based chat rooms. So like, so, so like when you're in Amsterdam, you can make a, a, a whole new chat room, call it Amsterdam stoners. It doesn't matter, right? Where, where, where it's only going to get picked up by people that are in that area. Oh, but, but geographically what based. Yes, yes, yes. It's geo-based. So, so you'll see it when you set up a chat room, it's a little hidden and we're getting ready to bring the feature out. But when you hit settings, you go to manage your chat room. There's a place they like to set a geo pin. So, so you can set the pin to be as small as one mile or a hundred miles. So if you want to have a chat room or a variety of chat rooms that are, that are in Amsterdam about coffee and wine and cannabis and all these lifestyle things, if you go to the search page, you'll, you'll, you'll see the collections of chat rooms. The fourth one over is called local. So once you start to set those pins, you'll start to build a list of local chat rooms that are in your area. So like we believe that is the, that's the ultimate mega, mega opportunity here. Mm -hmm. um, so like imagine this, right? So you're in Portugal, right? So I come to visit Portugal back just what you said, just uh, uh, in Paris, I don't know anybody in Paris, right? But I come on to Relevant, I go into local, I can go over and check out, say like the wine tab, here are all the chat rooms that relate to say wine. Hey, I'm Winder, I'm in from Florida, where's a great spot to get, I mean, all these things that you just otherwise can't do on Yelp or something like that, right? So. This Real is fun. really where a guy like you, being in Amsterdam, could start a portfolio of these, of these local chat rooms that are only in Amsterdam and, and build up all these micro communities. But think of it even further, like here we were biking in France, right? like, like you bike through all these little villages, like there's no local messaging system in all these little villages, right? Like just like there's millions of them across the world you know whether you're norway or france or you're in portugal so 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 imagine locals that are that are in these little hamlets maybe may only 500 or 1000 people but hey hey you know you can have a message saying hey where you can where you could ask a question to like the guy that has the butcher shop hey samuel did you get like like those New yeah. cuts. I mean, I mean, how are they getting the word around? Right. That to me is 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 the really, really big part of relevant that has not been pulled out. But our problem has been we've not found a way to scale local globally. So that's been the challenge. So we're, we're talking with some larger media companies that are in the radio space that need a new form of media. Right. Got radio. It. Media, no, that's out. They need a new form of media. It's called social media. That's the one form of media that people know about. So if we could get some partners to start to launch these in cities, then you know, if we grew this internationally, we'd want to partner with uh, maybe like the telecoms over there. You know, say, hey guys, bundle this in your service and. Uh, Something like that, where right. we're, we're also, or where we're selling franchises. Hey, Dan, do you want to own the Amsterdam franchise or relevant? Well, yeah, that could be worth a billion dollars. Got it. So I put some big ideas. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like really big. Really big. Yeah. I love it. Well, I've got my plan set up. I know what I'm doing. And I've got, I'm, as a matter of fact, good talking to you. I got to get out of here. <laughs> All right. No, wow. Wow. I did not know about that feature at all. Yes. Never heard about that. That is a, that's a changer. That's a deal changer, right? Yes. There. And it travels with you. So wherever you go, you can Set jump in and, and connect with people around things you would, uh, that you otherwise have no way to do like Google search and Yelp. No, it just doesn't do it, man. It's not real. Wow. And people yeah. would pay for that too. Like, Hey, do you want to have like the roaming package on relevant? Sure. For five bucks a month, no matter where you go, you could, you know, join and talk and, and, and you know, these local 
rooms and and ask people like what's going on tonight where's a great place to go hear live music like 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 where what to do like not looking on google and and getting a list like from trip advisor okay like that's what we get today and now with your new ranking system you'll know by looking at their rankings of whether how credible they are with their information and how much content. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's right. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So like, yeah. exactly. So I go like to Amsterdam, I pull up like the local tab. There's all the chat rooms. Here's the ones that have the highest scores. And so they're trusted, yada, yada, yada. Perfect. You know, good. Holy cow. You've got to be so excited. I'm excited. Well, we just, I, 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 it's just getting it to the, it's just getting us up you know, yeah. where we go from zero to one and then one to two and two to four. It starts and then four to eight, right? We, we got to get to where we're doubling stuff. Yeah. Well, I think you've given us all a ton of tools to work with. Okay. You know, I, 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 you know, when we first started this and you and I had the very first conversation, I think I told you, I never planned on even being on camera. I was creating a virtual character that I was going to have interviewing people and, and everything changed from what I originally had planned and all based on the feedback that I was getting back from the people who were watching the show. And uh, over a period of time, I've now learned more about how to really get my live going. Uh, and yeah. now with your new, with your, uh, with your uh, new YouTube channel, it's going to allow me to be able to really integrate on a whole nother level. I'm so yeah. excited. And, and again, Thank you. I'm I'm honored to be part of your network, and I'm super excited to see how this is all going to turn out. I'm okay. Yes, sir. You rock. Now, when are you coming to Amsterdam? Um, and TBD. Paris. It's four. It's TBD. Four, okay, four and a half, four and a half to five hour drive from Amsterdam to Paris. I'll, okay. I'm gonna take, you drink beer. Yeah, but okay. I'm more of a wino. But but I'll drink. Yeah. I like okay. look. I mean, when it comes to beer, Heineken. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's oh. right there in Amsterdam, right? So, no, uh, two and a half hours from outside of uh, Amsterdam in Belgium. There's a place called West Vletteren, and it is a monk monastery, and they make the uh -huh. best beer in the world. It's called West Vletteren Twelve, and they also make wow. pate there that is maybe one of the best pates in the world. And you can't buy this beer anywhere in the world. You have to go to the monastery to get the beer. Right? Gotcha. So okay. It becomes this ultra valuable. I think I need a road buy. trip. Yes. Yes. Road trip. And I'll take you to all the detours of uh, uh, where the best wine in the West goodie, best goodies are. Mon well, Rocher, the Chronicles. Mon Rocher, France. Stoner oh. Chronicles. Oh, I'm ready. Let's go. I'll be your Huckleberry. Okay. All right, all right. Thank you, sir. I look forward right. to uh, our next uh, our next evolution here. Yes, sir. All right. So we'll talk soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. That Thank was you, fun. Sir. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Perfect. All right. Bye. There you go. The man, Winder Hughes. Unbelievable. What a titanic change in this app is coming. Oh my God, dude. I would love to sit here and chat with you, but I've got to go create a thousand new vibes. I'll see you guys later. I'll actually, I will see you next week live from inside the judge's house at the Jack Harrow Cup. It's going to be spectacular. Do not miss Captain Hooter next week on Relevant. It's going to be awesome. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. <laughs>
It's Captain Hooter. Far out, man.